Hi there, Catherine Walters from The Knitted Raven, welcoming you back to the channel again. Big shout out to all of you who have recently subscribed. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. For a while now, I've been threatening to expose you to another type of wire knitting, and today's the day. Uh, you're going to learn how to make a flurry pendant. Now, the flurry pendant is a design that I've had for a few years now, and I've scaled it down slightly so you can use the 20 gauge wire that you should have in your kit if you've been working your way through the how-to videos on my channel. So no need to run out and buy new wire. Um, this particular project or this particular style of knitting has been inspired by the works of American sculptor and artist Ruth Asawa. I may have mentioned her previously and there will be a vlog post in future telling you a little bit more about her. But her daughter uh, demonstrated her, her mother's stitch technique on YouTube a number of years ago and I saw that video and thought hmm I can scale that down for making wire jewelry and I designed a bunch of, of uh, jewelry designs using that stitch technique. It's a little bit different than what you've been used to up to now but I think you're going to find it fun and the results very satisfying. So stick around and uh, without further ado let's get down to it. Welcome back Catherine Walters here and believe it or not this is take two or three for the day. I'm having all kinds of technical difficulties, but we shall persevere. This is what we're making today. In particular, this. This is the flurry pendant. It's a design that uh, I've adapted to 20 gauge wire, which is something you should already have in your kit, as I've already mentioned. Um, I've also already got videos up on how to make jump rings, how to make a simple clasp, how to finish leather, to use to suspend the pendant. So I'm not going to do that in today's video since that information is already there, but I will put links in the description box below for the other videos on how you do that. The one thing I will point out here is I made my clasp out of a 20 gauge wire instead of a heavier wire, and that's because the pendant is so light. If what you have at the back of a, of a, of a necklace is heavier than what's hanging on the front, eventually it will always work its way around your neck and end up here, <laughs> hanging like this, and you don't want that. You want your pendant to be what's featured and on display. So consider using a 20 gauge wire from your kit to make your clasp. Anyway, moving right along. We're gonna use 20 gauge wire right off the, um, the spool. If you bought your wire in a, um, in a uh, coil, you can work off the coil, and I'm just gonna take a pro-polish pad and clean the wire, because it's easier to do the cleaning now. Then I'm gonna coil that wire back onto the spool, because I'm gonna use the spool for leverage. You'll see in a minute. You're gonna need a seven millimeter, um, here we go, I'll turn it upside down, or right side up, a seven millimeter needle um, to make the uh, stitches. And that's what's different about this technique, is you actually make your stitches before you actually knit. So using your non-dominant hand to hold your needle, use your thumb to brace the end of your 20 gauge wire against the needle. And you are going to wind in a motion where you're always come, going under, around the back, and coming towards yourself. Now that's really, really important. If you go the other direction, your stitches are not going to come out properly. So pay attention to the direction that you're winding this in. And I'll stop and push them together a bit, counting two, four, six, eight. Eh, I can't count. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Oops, don't overlap them as I just did. Back it off and straighten it out. Yeah, let me double check. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. I have more than I need. Basically, if you wind on 20 stitches, you'll have enough. The pattern calls for 18. Um, part of the reason we're starting with this is because it doesn't take a lot of winding. Once you get into bigger projects, you won't actually cut your wire. You'll continue to work off the spool, adding additional stitches if you need. But for this, 18 to 20 stitches, a minimum of 18, up to 20 stitches on, on the needle is what you need. So slide it off. 
And now we're going to tease our stitches out because in this particular type of knitting, you actually prepare your stitches um, for knitting before you actually start the actual knitting process. Which for anybody who knits with yarn might seem counterintuitive where you actually use the knitting needles to make each stitch as you go along. Trust me on this. This is how this works. So as you can see, I'm teasing the stitches out and chain those pliers. That last stitch is going to be a little crooked, but that's okay. We don't really need that one. All right. I'm going to, since that one is, I didn't wind that around properly at the end, so we'll just get rid of some of that. There we go. Now, the first thing you need to do is at the heart of the pendant is a six petal snowflake shape. So you'll notice I am taking the time to gently work my wire around and you have to do this. Notice I hold here before I pull there and you keep repeating that process to make your um, to start making your wire curl. Because if you're not careful, you'll end up with some stitches that are much bigger than others, and you don't want that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and here's number seven. So we're almost there. Now number seven is almost ready to flip back in there in the beginning again. And we'll go ahead and do that. Now I like to have a small a smaller knitting needle handy um, for pushing and pulling. We will secure this end once we get to the end of the second round. But I use this needle for just giving the stitches that I push in after the first row a little bit of a tweak. It's easier than using my fingers. I, I, I break fewer fingernails this way. Now, when you are inserting um, a stitch into another stitch, you brace the previous stitch with your fingers like this and you give the stitch you want to insert a 90 degree bend and that angles it in the in the proper direction for going into the previous stitch and then you pull it back up straight so I'm holding here again and I'm twisting at a 90 degree angle and then I'm inserting it into the stitch below and you can go back with your steel knitting needle I think that's about a four it's a four millimeter needle and getting ready again, twist, push it in, away you go, you know, pull those stitches out a little bit, do the same thing again, give it a little tweak. Part of the reason I, I, I learned that I needed to bend the stitch I wanted to insert next at a 90 degree angle is it prevents you from pulling your previous stitch out. And I learned that the hard way. And we're almost up to the end of the row, or round, I should say. It's not a row, it's a round when you're going in a circle. Now, here we are at the beginning again. This is the first stitch. You will notice now that we've got this tail. That The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it up a little bit because I don't want to... Um, there you see, I just moved my stitches behind it now. So now I can take my chain those pliers and actually first I can probably cut some of that off because that's really long. I can take my chain those pliers now and start curling that around so it, oops, curling that around like that. You only need to go around twice so that's enough. I'm going to go back Use my seven millimeter needle. Actually, maybe I'll use my pliers for this. I'm going to go back in my original stitch and give it a little tweak to straighten it up before I finally trim and trim and tuck that down. It's a little fiddly, but 
it just takes a little bit of patience to secure that. I need to get my magnifiers on, folks. I'm way too nearsighted to do this without them. All right. Where was I? Oh, yes. The idea is, is you just want to work your little end in so it doesn't poke anybody. There you go. Run your fingers over it. That's the easiest way to know if you're doing it correctly. Okay. Now we've got a few things we've got to straighten out a little bit. But we're ready to start the third and final row. We've knit 12 stitches so far. So this is number 13. And you'll notice with each successive row, I'm pulling the stitches out a little bit further. And that's because the distance that each stitch has to travel is increasing the further we get from the center of the pendant. So I twist. Oh, I need to twist and pull that back. You might need to use your needle to pull the previous, the stitch from the previous row up a little bit. And that's okay. Because we will do a little bit of straightening at the very end. And... 90 degree angle, in it goes, tweak it up with the steel knitting needle. Steel works better than uh, wood for that. Um, it's really easy with a wooden needle to break the tip off when you're trying to leverage it with wire. This might only be 20 gauge, but it's work hardening every step of the way. So save your knit knitting needle tips and use a steel tip for this one. And here we go, 90 degrees. In I go. I don't think I quite made it. So back off. Let's straighten that one up a bit and go in again. It's a constant process of um, tweaking and adjusting as you go. But you will get there. Now I believe we are back to the beginning. Yep, so I'm going to unwind. I don't need those stitches at the end. What I need now is a length of wire to uh, to stop off. I came in with the nylon jaw pliers just then because that'll help. Now, first thing I want to do is I'm going to have a little look at this thing on a flat surface, which the bead mat works really great for. First thing I want to do is I want to do a little bit of adjusting here to pull some of these tips. The idea being with this with with this shape is is points that are opposite each other should run straight. These two should be at the same level as should these two and you can see right now that they're not. So sometimes you've got to go in with your pliers and make gentle adjustments. Now that's much closer. What I'm going to do here now is, excuse me, I'm going to go through this gap there. I'm not going to stop off at the top stitch. I'm going to stop off in here. And the reason for that is because that's about where this one, where this straight piece sits on the other side. And the more that I can do to make this look symmetrical, I know the happier I will be. So Actually, I need to go in the other direction. I want to come up from underneath because that's what happens on the other side. And jewelry just works out so much better when there's symmetry. Cutting off a little bit more of that because I really don't have that far to travel. Now, make sure first that you're coming up in the right spot. The spot that you intend to. Now, I've got it up through there, but I'm going to lift it because I don't want to wrap outward. I want to wrap inward. Subtle difference, but you'll see why I do it in a minute. And it's time to put the magnifiers back on because I really am that nearsighted. Okay, here we go. Where am I? I'm here somewhere. There we go. You can see I've got a tail right here. I'll pull it up straight so you can see it. You can see it there. 
okay so I can trim a little bit more of that off because it doesn't have far to go and my goal here is just to get it out of the way in fact I can probably take more off once I have that bent down a bit I will take more of it off yeah and now it's a little bit fiddly but keep playing with your pliers until you've got it tucked in where it's not going to hurt anybody there I think I've pretty well got it this time now okay We've pulled ourselves a little out of shape there, so the first thing you want to go back in now and do is straighten up your points. And try to even things out a little bit. I usually use my fingers, and this should be a slight concave shape. That will give you a little bit of room to do your straightening. It's also helpful if you go into the center of your design, and you'll see that you have pieces of wire crossing over or facing each other opposite uh, on the um, on the center die uh, on the center uh, petals so I come in I pull those two a little bit closer together because they're parallel I'll go here I'll pull those two petals in a little bit and what that does is it makes it releases some of the pressure on the existing wires and stitches that you've got in place so you can pull from the outside and straighten it up a bit because it's knitting and even though that there's wire involved here, there's still some give to it. How are we doing? Not quite, but almost. I'm going to go in and do this one more time. But what I want you to do is to keep playing with your playing with your design ever so slightly until you get to a point that you're happy with how it looks. Now, sometimes it helps to go in and actually use the chain nose pliers. Did you see how well that looked or worked? Because it's metal and metal and your chain nose pliers are a bit flat. So it gives you a bit more leverage. That's looking much more like a snowflake. Now, I think I'm going to put my join on the bottom and I will suspend it from the top right there. The next thing you need to do is you need to go in. I'm going to use a smaller, um, a smaller anvil and a smaller, or sorry, bench block and a smaller chasing hammer because it fits in my terrible camera angle here today. But what you can do is you can use your steel bench block and the chasing hammer you've used all along, except you'll probably want to do the flattening with the rounded edge of your uh, chasing hammer because this is really, really small. So bring in and make sure that you've got your petals in the place where you want them, because once you set this curve, they're not gonna move very much. So make any last minute adjustments you want to make, and then come in, and you're only flattening the outer part of that loop. And you're gonna work your way around and do it all the way around. And the reason you're doing this is because it sets the curve. It'll make it a lot harder to pull it apart by accident. Now, I seem to have lost some distance there, so I'm going to go in, I'm going to squeeze the previous level, and I'm going to push that up. I'm going to do a quick check to see if I still like the shape of that. The answer is yes. That's looking pretty good. I will tell you this is one of those things that it will get better with practice. Um, and practice does make perfect with wire knitting, just like with regular knitting. But um, that's the basics of it. You're ready to hang it uh, from a jump ring on a cord or a chain. And the list of the videos that I have on how to finish leather cord, how to make a simple clasp, how to make jump rings will all be in the description box below. Just remember that I made a lighter uh, class for, for this one only in 20 gauge. But that's about it, folks. 
If you enjoyed this video, please uh, hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss future updates. Catherine Walters from The Knitted Raven. Hope you have a great day. See you again soon. Thank you.